Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Arwez. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. If you'd like to join us during the live show, you can drop some comments down in the Discord chat room. If you'd like to get an invite code to the Discord chat room, the URL for that is discord.gg slash Adafruit. Welcome everybody, we'll take a moment um, to welcome everybody to the live broadcast chat room while we get things sorted here, like our audio. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see, there we go. Okay, feel free to add your GIFs and GIFs and your memes in the Discord as we sort through this. All right, we'll start off with, um, Pedro, you wanna do any shout outs? Hello, Duester. Good morning, Yanni. Good morning, Andy Calloway, Rosin, and Susan. Good morning to y'all. We're hanging out at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Yeah, so go ahead so. and check that out. We're also hanging out in the Facebook, on the YouTubes, on the LinkedIn's, and on Periscope. Good Hello. morning, cup of coffee. I need another cup of coffee. I don't have time to make coffee. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Wirecast decided you that. A robot coffee maker. Bluetooth. You, di you disconnect your Bluetooth headphones from them, the automatically connect into your computer, and everything crashes. Don't ever get Bluetooth audio. Going. It's like that Jenga piece that you remove, and everything just everything falls. Just <laughs> apart, yeah. But we got it all back together. What a, a great minute. operating system. A minute. <laughs> Um, hello, uh, Dab Batty. Wow, that's very cool. cool. Is that man. SLA? SLS? Yeah, very cool GIF. Is Definitely play? check out the chat room from that cool, yeah. awesome uh, banter that's going on in there. That's great. Okay. All, All right, right, let's go ahead and start up the show. We got a really cool project. Let's go ahead and start off with housekeeping. Sure. Um, yeah, so it, you get some free stuff if you order more things from Adafruit. We'll start off with orders that are $99 or more. You'll get a half size from a Proto. That's that lovely breadboard PCB with through hole plating and lovely power and ground rails. If you spend $149 or more, you'll get the half size from a Proto plus an Adafruit KB2040. That's that keyboard driver that can run CircuitPython or Arduino and more. And if you spend $200 or more, you'll get the KB2040, the half size promo Proto and Free ground shipping. And then we got a new one for orders that are $2.99 or more. You get the ground shipping, you get the KB2040, the half size pro proto, and let me catch my breath, the Circuit Playground Express. They're back in stock. I think we got our chips from um, from Microchip. We begged nicely, we asked them nicely, and they gave us our, our CMD21 chips. That is amazing. Woohoo! Okay. Heading over to the jobs board at jobs.adafruit.com. This is where you can see some maker gigs available for folks. If you are a maker looking for some maker gigs and you want to throw up your skills and your profile, it's free to do so. You can make an account and register hassle free. I think I can say that. Um, we got a couple of uh, gig listings here. The latest one is a science kit builder from MicroKits in the Charlottesville, Virginia area, and that's a part-time gig. So check those out, there's many more here that are still ongoing, so uh, if you are in the market for a new gig or you are a maker looking for ma more makers, <laughs> check out jobs at adafruit.com. All right, we have a newsletter that's focused on the products that are added on the weekly to the Adafruit shop. You can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter and subscribe to that email. Also check out adafruitdaily.com for daily doses of content. You can subscribe to specific categories such as the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Shout out to everybody for subscribing to that one and sending your stories to the team. And shout out to Ann Barella for still doing this awesome job of gathering all the weekly news for Python on Microcontrollers. Check it out. I also want to give a shout out to Paul Cutler for the Circuit Python Show podcast. This week we have um, a new guest, so check him out. The uh, Nick Toll, who worked on Mew, the Mew editor. So check that one out if you want to hear more about Nicholas Toll. All right, um, I am. I think we're all through with uh, the housekeeping. 
Can jump back over and see some gifts. Look at that. DJ Devin 3 has got a nice one. And Yanni's got a nice one too. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this <laughs> awesome project for this week. Cool, yay. This week's project is an IR LED remote. This owl is disguised as a remote. This is our little 3D printed owl. Shout out to Lamar uh, for the idea on this one. Um, I have a TV and I lost the remote, so I, I wanted to <laughs> make a, a remote for my TV. Um, and there is a library in CircuitPython that makes it easy to do so. Shout out to Liz Clark for putting the code together for this one. Um, it uses the IR LEDs to transmit an IR pulse signal. So uh, I'm controlling a TV, but IR LEDs are like this one here from this remote. So this is a little remote that controls uh, this um, light bar. And we were able to um, capture the pulses from the remote with this guy here. This is an IR receiver. So we can capture pulses. And um, let's do a demo, shall we? Hopefully this works. So I got my, uh, my LED bar and I'll use the LED arcade button to send a pulse. It did not work. <laughs> it's working now. It's a line of sight thing because that's how IR LEDs work. <laughs> I don't know where the IR LED, this is probably a proximity sensor, but it worked. Very cool. Like turn it off and turn it on and turn it off and turn it back on. So we can, um, although it's just doing one um, signal, we're actually kind of doing two. Uh, it's toggling between on and off. And if you look at the remote, um, on and off are, are very different pulses. Um, so you can, in the Moo editor, you can uh, go into debugging mode and capture a pulse from a remote and then copy that array of pulses and, and pop it into the code. Um, so that's kind of how this is working. So let me talk a little bit about the OWL. So the OWL is a uh, 3D printed, no supports required. Thing. and it's got a couple features. So we have this little plug here that is removable and we made this giant openings just so that we can access um, the, uh, the components in here, such as the, uh, the, the LED arcade button um, has a hex nut that gets uh, panel mounted to the top here. And then uh, the case is a snap fit dealy. So we have the cover attached to the owl. The owl has these, these built-in tabs uh, these mounting holes, um, and then we're using uh, screws and hex nuts to, uh, to secure them together. You'll notice that we have some um, JST connectors. This just makes it easy so we can disconnect um, the, uh, the various components, like the LED from the, from the button and the switch from the button. Uh, the LEDs are wired in series, and um, they're also uh, hooked up with these uh, connectors. So the main board here is the Cutie Pie with the RP2040 chip. It's kind of like the most readily available chip. It can run CircuitPython and it's running CircuitPython. We have it um, fitted onto a, a quarter size from a proto PCB. That way we can um, share a lot of power and grounds because you get tons of power and ground signals and it makes it modular so I can actually pop out uh, the Cutie Pie and use it in another project. Which is a good thing when you have a chip shortage and you're running out of boards. You can always uh, salvage your board and take it out and it's not soldered in place. Let me uh, disconnect it from USB and actually show that it comes off like that. So there's your Cutie Pie RP2040. Um, very, very uh, small package with a ton of goodies. You also have a Stemma connector right there. So if you wanted to do um, some I squared C sensors, uh, it's easy to connect to that. And uh, these are those short headers. And then we have some female short headers here. So let me put this back in. Cool. Um, the frame is also snap fit. And you can see that the IR LED, I mean the IR receiver, is uh, press fitted to this little thing here. So that's how that's working. Everything's pretty modular. Nothing's really glued together. So you can uh, kind of swap out parts as you need. Um, yeah, the, hmm, what can I say, <laughs> I'm running out of things, um, yeah, it's a nice snap case, I said that, 
Um, it's not battery powered because it's meant to be plugged into the wall, so you have access to the USB-C uh, there. It's a little bit, you know, of a process to get your cable in there. You can either sneak it in. It's probably easier to just do it this way. That's why snap fits are great. Just like that. I didn't want to have this board come too close because there's a screw there. Um, so those are all kind of design considerations when you're making a thing like this. Um, and if, if it's going to be on your desk, like, or, or wherever on a tabletop, you're probably not going to disconnect it. So that's why I kind of did it that way. But yeah, it's still accessible. Cool. So that's kind of the project in a nutshell. Um, you can do all sorts of fun, creative things um, with uh, electronics. <laughs> Uh, this was a lot of fun to put together. Again, shout out to Liz and, and uh, Lamar for kind of coming up with the idea and writing the code for it. Um, but yeah, we have a learn guide. We'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Um, but if there's any questions, I'll go ahead and take a look. We have some owl gifts, no doubt. <laughs> Liz says the owls are not what they seem. This was supposed to be a reference to, oh man, what movie was it? Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. Yes. There's an owl that, is it surveying? I don't, I'm not sure. I need to watch to a big. Post down what the uh, reference is to that, Liz, please. <laughs> sure. Okay, find out. And then someone's saying, did you check the couch cushions for the remote? <laughs> so when you have kids, they somehow figure out how to open up a black hole, and your stuff is forever lost. <laughs> yeah. The TV was a little bit of a different thing. It became a Oh, house yeah. So when that. you're buying a house and it says fully furnished, you know what that means. Oh, There's missing remotes. <laughs> too close or what oh yeah i don't know where the um the sensor for that actually is i think what you're looking at here is the pir so when you walk close hey dude um, the battery finally died oh wow how about that one that's good for a demo yeah that's awesome you guys got to see um it working and uh it's got um a USB oh yeah, charger, yeah, yeah. Here, so put that guy in. that's not gonna work uh over here I'll quickly grab yeah here's this and then a battery. I should have one of those uh, lipstick ones. You could just plug it into my computer. It should be fine. So, there it goes. All right, we'll let you charge while we walk through the learn guide, huh? Oh, man. Okay. If we head over to learn.adafruit.com and let it load, you can see. Um, the learn guide's up. It's, it got published uh, this morning, so check that out if you are interested in building it, or if you just want to learn more about the Cutie Pie, working with IR sensors, or learning all about LEDs. We have some prerequisite guides that will walk you through that. Um, so here's a handful of parts that are used in the project. The Cutie Pie RP2040 is in stock, and just about everything else is in stock as well. So, yay! That's kind of a challenge to do these days. Um, so yeah, a bunch of other odd bits, such as the rubber feet, uh, hardware kit, you know, for the M3 screws, through hole resistor for the LEDs. We got everything in stock, so that's awesome. Glad to see that. So that's the home page. Uh, the CAD files are in the CAD files page. You can see a little um, 3D explosion of all the parts. This owl, we designed it in Fusion 360. It's a bit of a parametric model. You can change it up if you'd like. We have 3D models of the Cutie Pie and the quarter size Perma Proto, as well as the LED and the arcade button. All those models are accessible and downloadable from our GitHub repository at github.com slash Adafruit. You can just search for CAD parts and download them. We have them in different formats, such as a step, STL, and the Fusion 360. Um, but you can download them. They're all hosted here on learn.adafruit.com. You can download the STLs or the CAD source, such as the step file or the Fusion 360 file. And we also have a link here to that GitHub repo that I was talking about. And uh, here's the cutie pie spinning and looking great with all the components populated. Oh, um, you're gonna need a 3D, if you do wanna print the owl, you need a, a minimum build volume of at least 100 by 100 by 120. I obviously I upped the, because <laughs> it says 95 by 95. You want, if you're doing like a brim or a skirt, you always want to have a little bit more extra room. So if you have a, a printer that's like 100 by 100 by 150, it should be pretty good. So there you go. 
So the circuit diagram, we put this together with the Fritzing app. We have a library. Adafruit has a library of Fritzing parts. If you want to put together your own wiring diagram, you can kind of drag and drop various components and use um, the wiring stuff to uh, make connections. So it's pretty fun. So check that out. Um, all the wired connections are broken out here um, for accessibility purposes and text format. So that's cool. Um, I actually usually have this on my phone or print it out on paper and re reference it because there's a little bit of wired connections here. And although you could, you know, daisy chain all the grounds together, for example, it's nice to not have to do that. So the Perma Proto really saved it for this one. And I like the modularity aspect of it. And uh, yeah, shout out to Liz actually for that idea. Like, yeah, you should probably put it on a Perma Proto. I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, cool. Let's check it out. CircuitPython page walks you through installing CircuitPython on the Qt Pi RP2040. It's fairly easy to do so. You, uh, you use the uh, the reset and the boot button to get into the bootloader mode, and then you uh, download a UF2 file from the link, this little green button here, and then you literally just drag and drop that UF2 file onto the um, onto the USB flash drive that shows up when you uh, get into the bootloader mode automatically flashes it and restarts and you're ready to go. It's just extra code if you want it, or extra documentation on knowing about the LED statuses and entering safe mode and reflashing. So that's really nice. It's, it's very, very thorough. But once you have your Cutie Pie set up, you can get the code. Um, we recommend using the download project bundle. When you click on that, you get a zip file and you get two versions um, of the code, one in CircuitPython 8, which is the super latest, and then CircuitPython 7, which is the stable release. Pick one, whichever one you have, whichever one you've installed, you can just um, use that one. In this case, we're using uh, CircuitPython 8. Uh, but what's cool is along with the zip file, you get the, the libraries um, built into it. So that's really nice. So you get- um, You don't have to hunt. You don't have to hunt for libraries, yeah. So please use the project bundle in, uh, the code will work with those libraries because a lot of time I'll, I'll install, you know, the libraries it's out of and date. it's out of date <laughs> or not up to date. So it's nice to have the project bundle. Um, yeah, so shout out to Liz. She did a great job on, on the code and docu um, commenting it out so folks can change it up. Here you can see uh, these are the arrays um, for all the, uh, the pulses that we received. So w doing one button press gives you like a whole bunch of these arrays. So that's kind of, it's kind of, weird like that, but that's how it is. And then for powering off, it's a different set of, uh, of, uh, of values. Now, if you have uh, something that is just a single array, I guess you could just populate it twice because in the code, it's kind of toggling between the two. Um, and then you can change the NeoPixel colors here. Right now we have red and green, but you can change it to whatever RGB value you want and you can change the brightness and the, um, what else could you change? I guess it's really mm -hmm. all you want to change, right? Well, like, I mean, if you want to do like a little animation or something for each one, not needed. Yeah, just... you could do that. That's right. Yeah, you could trigger an animation mm -hmm. when you press the button. That'd yeah. be cool. Right now, we just have it on and off colors. I'm guessing but, uh, for uh, uh, accessibility type stuff. If, you know, you have trouble seeing like colors or something. Maybe you can see like the flashing animation or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, it's all there and uh, up on GitHub as well. If you want to. View the code on GitHub. There's a, a link right here. View on GitHub. You can do a PR if you'd like, or just kind of copy it. But yeah, it's on GitHub. It's hosted there. Nice. All right. The next section just kind of walks you through um, verifying that you have all the files installed correctly onto your CircuitPython drive. This is pretty much the, one of my favorite features of CircuitPython. It shows up like a, a flash drive. I kind of forget to say that. And like all the code and the assets are just there. And whatever computer you plug it into, it's it's there. You can't do that with other dev boards, like an Arduino code. Like you plug it in, the computer's like, huh? Are you, you're something? <laughs> oh, you need a copy of that code? Sorry. The code is <laughs> one to zero, so I don't see it. So anyway, <laughs> CircuitPython, it's, it, it's amazing for that, for a rapid development and development uh, with accessibility in mind. So you can use whatever text editor to modify the code. Um, there's some more documentation that uh, Liz put together for decoding your pulses. We have a dedicated guide on mm -hmm. Uh, using the Moo editor and the serial console, um, you basically want to walk through this guide and you can um, uh, capture pulses this way. So um, this just walks you through step by step um, using your II remote to, uh, to decode um, the, the values from the remote. 
and this just walks you through it and then at some point you get this nice long array of, of values that you can copy and paste into the code so check that out um, and sh shout out to Ann for putting this one together um, I think Ann, Ann did a couple of different guides too for uh, Pulse but this one's from Lady you know so shout out to both of them <laughs> shout outs okay uh, there's a little bit of note on how the uh, the code works so check it out um, yeah yeah, you can read it and change it up as you'd like. Okay, uh, next up I'm gonna walk through quickly some of the things. Um, when we're doing learn guides, uh, depending on how much wiring there is, we tend to split it up into segments. So originally I was gonna just do one big page, but there's a lot of wiring, so I broke it up into, into sections. So this page will walk you through setting up the headers um, for your Cutie Pie and your Chroma Proto. The next page walks you through wiring up the LEDs. You have a, a resistor as well in line that goes into the, the ground wire. So we do a little bit of sharing pins here just to kind of make it easier. And then we end up um, soldering a two pin JST cable uh, to the two wires that are coming off of those two IR LEDs. And then we, uh, we solder up the, uh, the resistor to the ground wire that's coming off of the, uh, of the ground connection. <laughs> and then we end up with this kind of like spaghetti looking monster with two two IR eyes. The eyes for our owl, right? Wiring up the button, I'm using two more JST connectors. There's a little bit of a note here, um, just to know which, because there's two sets of uh, terminals, one for the LED and one for the switch, they're separate. So we just walk through wiring that up. So the next page uh, wires up the, um, the IR receiver. There's just three wires to it. Um, follow the circuit diagram for the correct pins. Pin one is signal, pin two is ground, and pin three is voltage. I remembered. And then wiring up the Pro Proto is the next page. So you just kind of walk through um, soldering up all those JC connectors and the IR receiver uh, to the various pins. On to assembly. We got some hex nuts, we got some M3 screws. We attach the cover to the owl. Very happy that I made an opening in the owl because boy golly was it hard to uh, <laughs> uh, with the first owl I didn't have an opening in the back and I was like struggling uh, mm -hmm. with tweezers. It's uh, a ship in a bottle. It's a ship in a bottle, yeah. So with that opening in the back, it really makes it accessible. So there's various, whenever you have to panel on anything, you always want to have access to your thing. Um, I thought about different things like cutting the head off and then having the head screw mm -hmm. in and all these convoluted ideas and it ended up just being as simple as let's make a giant hole in the back and then we'll print a little thing um, to plug it up if you want to cover it up but yeah your hand can fit through there and your fingers and everything can fit in there just fine um, the leds are fitted from the inside because of just the way the body of the led has a has a bit of a flange and that flange kind of stops it from being uh, pressed in um, all the way so that's why we're doing it from the inside um, it's quite funny when you take the leds out you have to kind of like like you're murdering this owl it's quite yeah, scary really not yeah you just pump, pump it anyway um the panel mounted button um is, gosh the led button is panel mounted that means you have to install it from the top and then you use the hex nut uh, from the inside to secure it in place um i'm really happy with the geometry on the inside i did a custom revolve around man it's gonna be hard to see it so i might switch to cad mode but not really. Do you have a light? If only we had a, a light that we can shine. <laughs> Let's see if I can. All right, see that? It's so dark in there, you can't see. <laughs> anyway, I made um, I made it so that the, the lining here is at a 45 degree angle, so there's no mm. overhangs going on there. There's a little bit of an overhang here, but the printer's able to catch it because it has active cooling, and most printers have active cooling it. these days. But yeah, all of this geometry is like nicely, uh, uh, nicely drafted. Like the angle is at forty-five degrees, so or maybe it's thirty degrees. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's not ninety, so that's a good thing. And uh, it it makes it so you don't need any support. So very cool. Um, yeah. So the rest of the assembly, um, you're just kind of uh, securing the perma proto to the bottom cover, press fitting the IR receiver into its dedicated little spot and connecting the things and just kind of snap fitting the things together which is my favorite thing to do so that's the learn guide in a nutshell um it's very thorough 
Uh, super fun to design. Uh, I hope to do a layer by layer on some of the techniques on designing something uh, that has these really nice uh, details like the uh, triangles and the, the nose and the eye sockets and yeah. They all follow the uh, contour of the uh, of the shape, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really good one to do. Yeah, you can just about see that the LED is in there. If all the lights are turned off, it illuminates pretty nice. So at nighttime, when it's on your desk, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. You can uh, visually see where your remote is. Yeah, and what status it's in. Like, is it on mm -hmm. mode or off mode? Hmm. Um, another interesting bit is I actually used, uh, so inside the Cura slicing you software, fuzzy? I used fuzzy skin to diffuse mm. the LED. So here's what the part looks like without fuzzy skin. So without fuzzy skin, it has like these hot spots. So the fuzzy skin just allows it to kind of... Breaks it up. It breaks it up, yeah. So it diffuses the LED a little bit better. And um, you can get this, this really nice kind of texture. Um, I don't know. I just kind of like it. Uh, I wonder how fuzzy skin would look like here. You know? Mm, that might, <laughs> that might nice. look kind of good. Uh, Maybe. But yeah, that's kind of what's going on. So, yeah. That is the owl. I have not designed an owl before, and this was a lot of fun to learn how. Alright, looking at some of the suggestions and comments on the Discord. DJ Devin saying it'd be cool to have audio. Hoot, what activated? Hoot. Yes, I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. There are plenty of pins available. So if you wanted to add a, a Stemma speaker, you can use uh, any of these digital pins, probably A0. Um, you could also use the I2C, uh, or, or not I2C, what is it, I2S? You mm -hmm. can do I2S audio. It's all supported in CircuitPython. You can use uh, the Wave audio playback or the MP3 audio playback. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Let's say you had um, it's a nice audio. an escape room. You're working on an escape room or you're working mm -hmm. on uh, a haunted a haunt for whatever. You want to make a cool prop um, and you have some a sort of appliance like a light. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice little jump think scare. Think about that. Yeah, like kind of a jump scare or you're trying to unlock something in the escape room. Like I don't know. I'm just trying to think. I'm not good at ideas, but <laughs> I think it could be better than a TV remote. Uh, it could be a little bit more themed and kind of... Mm -hmm. Right. Is that set up for this? It was. Eyes. Ah. <laughs> there, you go. there it goes. I think it's I somewhere know. in this area. It probably... Maybe. Yeah. It's like blind, blind oh. its eyes. If only we could see IR signals, right? Oh, yeah. The phone doesn't do that anymore. Oh, it, it it, used it's to. got the filter, yeah. It's got an IR filter then, huh? All right. Fatari is asking, what nozzle and bed temps are you generally sure, using for yeah, PLA and PLA Plus? Good idea. So uh, this is uh, everyone's uh, Galaxy Gray, Galaxy Black. I think it's Glitter, black. PLA. So just PLA from everyone. And then uh, this is from 3D Solutech. It's natural clear PLA. The nozzle we're using is, is it a stock nozzle? You mm -hmm. probably more yeah. know more 0. about 4. it. I think he's asking what temperatures we're using. Sure. So. Uh, we like to go a little bit hotter. So uh, 210 to 220 uh, C on the on the nozzle and like 60 C on the bed. Mm -hmm. We use a uh, powder coated PEI flexi build plate for our uh, Creelty, um, Creelty CR10S Pro. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Smart Pro. Okay, so smart. I think what you used on that one. Smart Pro. Yeah, the V2 is what I used. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, good questions. And uh, we have a link to the filament if you want that. You could probably pull it out. Um, sometimes we link to it, sometimes we don't because sometimes filament manufacturers uh, are hard to get a hold of. And then uh, Dream Controlled is asking uh, what are the advantages of, of using USB C in a project like this? Uh, it's just what was on the Cutie Pie RP2040. I think we're moving away. Um, Lamar, I think Lamar Free, Lady Ada, she's moving away from micro B ports on dev boards just because USB C is reversible, right? You can get it's more power into it. You can get it more power, more data. Um, it's a little bit. It's more standardized. Standardized, okay. They're figuring out what. Uh, yeah. Voltages and but all really, that. the hole here is like I, I can put whatever dev board in here if I wanted to put uh, something else like a feather or itsy bitsy or Arduino Nano clone. 
you, you, you got that modularity there, so I'm glad I didn't design it particular to a specific dev board. You don't even need to use the Chroma Proto, you just kind of glue it to the to the bottom cover. Um, but this giant hole here is, is, is going to work for the majority of USB cables. Or even a, a, you know, a jack if you want to do it that way, like a DC jack, you could do that, that's fine. I've done that before. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a USB-C Y reasoning. And then a, dang it, I lost it. You lost what was it. It's another question. Our audio is okay, I hope. Yep. Okay. No complaints there. Sweet. Hoot. Hoot hoot. Oh, just a comment from Andy Calloway saying it has a Totoro look, Doesn't especially it? right here in this yeah. area. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I wanted to go with that kind of, um, yeah, acute rounded shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right, moving on to, I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's Assembly. this week's project. Oh, that's this week's project. Check it out. Let us know what you think. And I hope it inspires you to make some owls. And make a universal TV remote or something. Yeah, pass, pass comment on uh, from DJ Devin saying that lost their remote, their AC remote, and they were going to get a replacement if they knew about this project. I would have been happy to do that. Yeah, the only thing, though, I'll say, is that you do need the remote to capture ah. the thing from the remote. So how I was able to do it, luckily we had a, another TV of the same brand and model number, so I was able to use um, the cable TV remote that the cable provider set up. I think it took ah. them like all day to set up the remote because it turns out that the TV was very particular on off and on has two separate things so you do kind of need a remote that's why i kind of am sharing this one like this is how i was able to capture the pulses through the remote so yeah a little bit of an i gotcha there right so you do need a universal remote that can yeah that has could, some of the codes in there yeah, i guess you could buy a, a universal remote like if i didn't have that extra remote i would have had to bought mm -hmm. a universal remote and then like copied grabbed, grabbed decoded it from there yeah but yeah, all things to consider. So I, I might as well let you know. So, all right, cool. And that's this week's project. Yeah, yeah, it's our first kind of IR LED project, so mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun, and we learned a lot. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's. What are we prototyping? Yeah, what are we prototyping? I think you started off with this super sweet. Cool. Yeah, I need to come up with a new enclosure um, for a wireless project. So we th wanted to make like a really themed case that's very tactile and has like a tactile feel to it. So it's a snap fit case and it's three pieces. The covers are symmetrical. So what's interesting is you can kind of press in the center here and then just kind of pop it out. So you'll notice that the snap fit nubbins, normally they're on in the inside of the framing, but in this case, they're on the outside of the framing. So I have these kind of cool drafted angles and it kind of, the, the, the shell follows the, uh, the contour of those drafted angles. And then the covers themselves have these tabs on the outside and the tabs have nubs. And it's a little bit different than the grabbers that kind of are, are kind of like the chevron shape. They're just these nubs. And so when you press fit them together, they click in that way and you can either pull it out with your fingernail like that, or like I said, just squeeze the center and it comes right off. Now, if notice that there's this flat edge here, this flat edge, all it's doing is it's, it's just preventing the, uh, the cover from shifting uh, up and down. Yeah, so it lines it up and keeps it in place. And you get this benefited uh, feature that if you press on these edges, this right here and this right here, you, you now you cannot, you can't, you can't open it. So let's say this was like a piece of a bigger project. Let's say it's a neck and then you have a body here and the neck here. And if you wanted to attach this, you want to attach this cover here, um, you get that out of where the weight is holding it in place. But then if you wanted to still open it, you just squeeze the center and it easily comes undone. So those are just some things to kind of uh, nice. Look out for and consider when you're designing something, an enclosure that has these snap fit bits. Um, so I'll probably do a layer by layer on this as well because it's got some a little bit of a different sketch setup, a little bit of a different recipe. Um, but yeah, this will be a uh, 
a cool enclosure for a, a, a kind of a remote control that we're doing for a droid. Nice, more droids. Yeah, and more snap fit stuff. Woo-hoo. All right, cool. I'm just missing a handle here, or it's like a hammer, <laughs> something like that. The, the what you call it, a articulating little yeah. so handle to hold it would be cool. Here's my magic trick. <laughs> they, they both come out. Cool, so that, that's something that, uh, that we're working on. Speaking of hammers, you want to show your your find? So this is not my design. This is uh, something I got off a of thing of wrist, but just wanted to show how cool it looks. Ah, this is the, dang it, how do you pronounce the name? Yeah, Stormbreaker, not Mew, 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 Mew whatever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, good. This is a good, uh, strong print. So okay. just testing out this new uh, darker wood filament, and it looks really good. Just checking out how, uh, I don't want to snap fit it yet because there's still more pieces that need to go attached to that. So this is printed at 50% of the scale size. So this is supposed to be like a giant print. Uh, but this is just for a time lapse Tuesday. Just wanted to show off how freaking cool it looks yeah, with looks the wood. Great. Uh did an excellent job on the... Is uh, that the same filament, right? The everyone's yeah, yeah. glitter black mm-hmm. LA. Yeah, this is excellent stuff for all the prototyping stuff we do. Just general uh, testing. Yeah, uh, it's, it's readily not quite available. silky. It is glittery, mm-hmm. um, and it's pretty tough for like, even for yeah. mechanical parts. I'm, I'm using it all the time. And this is the Everyone uh, PLA wood, the dark color. So, I wanted to test that out. Fantastic sculpting yeah. and with yeah. the twigs and everything. Um, surprised how everything fits together. Usually with wood parts, there's like so much um, expansion. Or no, just the way it's it's not as strong and oh, it's very brittle. It's very stringy too. So um, it's a good blend here of PLA and yeah. Um, good thing uh, there was a question about the um, the temperature that we use for this one. I had to drop it down to 190. Oh, interesting. Just so it didn't wasn't as stringy, and mm. that worked out beautifully, even Perfect. with a bunch of supports that this one had because it prints like that. Right. This is what's like so wrapping onto it. So support is pretty is pretty fair. Yeah, it was really good with that. So right. I just wanted to um, show my pleasure with uh, using <laughs> this uh, filament and uh, of course this awesome design. Have to go check out uh, the new Thor. The filament to anybody? Yeah, I can put it in there if anybody's interested. Okay. But it's cool. super easy to find on Amazon. Just wood PLA. Okay. Everyone. Dark. And the three D model. Where can we find that? Oh, I can post that too. Okay, I mean, cool. I'll, I'll post it next week. Yeah, too. yeah. It'll, it'll be next it'll, week's time lapse. Yeah, it's time lapse in the other room. Cool. So, yeah, just some cool stuff that uh get printed up. Just uh ah again how yeah, cool it looks great. when it's like together mm-hmm. like that like just yeah. the way that the twigs are i all... would like to reprint my owl with this yeah that's and what uh print the base with this mm-hmm. that'd be kind of cool yeah that'd be real nice okay cool yeah give us those links people yeah what the uh, wood looks like an old uh beach wood or sanded wood yeah and you could definitely sand this you can stain it um, you can do all of uh, the things that you can do with wood it's just like you yeah. know wood um like sawdust and um uh, PLA mixed together. Okay. And yeah, post a link to that. Almost looks like just fuzzy skin, but it's just the model yeah, I, texture. I printed it too fast. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, right. so it should it's look. Like, I wasn't sure if this detail was modeled into the STL. No, this like it's, really it's too fast. Okay. <laughs> dropped it <laughs> down. I was printing at 70 millimeters a second. I should have dropped it down to like 60 or 50. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good tips. All right. And that's what we're prototyping, I think, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. A little bit of a shop talk too there as well. Yeah. So. yeah. Let's jump into this week's community makes. Yeah. Every Tuesday we 3D print something and do a little time lapse. This week it's a flexi excavator by Shred.eu, and this is a print and place model of an excavator. It looks like we're using some rainbow filament, some rainbow silk PLA filament. Yes. And. Was there any supports? No, no supports. No, this is support free. Support free and yeah, print in place, models. articulating. Very, very fun. Look at these joints. Did you have to do any um, offset compensation or anything? Nothing. Straight out. Of the, yep. This is a testament to like good tolerances in their mm-hmm. model, like built in. Yeah. All right, let's uh, look. Of course, overhead. the very awesome play feature of the flexible extruder arm here, or excavation arm. Excavation. Rotates and then oh, it moves up and down. I can tell this was the bed because you oh, can yeah, see yeah. here is where mm-hmm. it was able to kind of catch the 90 degree overhang yeah, super surprised so with like the roof good. and like the little bit of detail in here inside it's you happen to know off the top wheel. of your head the name brand of the filament the rainbow stuff no i can find it though and no then, name brand <laughs> no i'll find it <laughs> okay. and then we added a little bit of the um what is it real butter oh that's 
it's like inline movie. skate right. butter it's, it's or lubricant. lubricant yeah and check out that wheel yeah no sanding or anything no right? no sanding cool and uh really because um it's a little bit harder to rotate the wheel on um like non-carpeted ground so right. okay. um, of course when i'm looking at what to time lapse um one Even of the, the overhangs here yeah all oh, over good. yeah because it catches itself huh yeah one See, of the a little bit of a droopy here but and, and from yeah, a distance yeah. you, you don't even notice it. it looks perfect yeah, you get to like really look at it and there's of course there's like um a little zits and stuff because of the oh, way that it time lapses clever so, so with the chair um they've uh, added a, a drafted angle there mm -hmm. to avoid an overhang so it's really clever and a lot of the internal here is all drafted edges Man, drafted edges are the best. That was bomb diggity. <laughs> this is uh, another thing. Oh, you printed it twice. Yeah, another reason why to print one of these is to look at how it was actually designed and you looking at how they did all the angles yeah, and the drafts tried, and we, where wish, to put all that I is wish we did that more. <laughs> super inspiring on how to design something without any supports. Here it is again in rainbow because I know once we're done with this, the kids are both going to want I want to... one too, Daddy. Yeah, exactly. Me too, me too. I okay. Want <laughs> and here's and here's what you can see the difference with the uh, lubricant without. Mm. So that's why Pretty I put rough, it on huh? there. Okay. So it's super useful for adding to any joints that are, you know, always gonna be needing to uh, rotate or, you know, mm. flex. <laughs> so super good for that. So you don't like uh, saw down your uh materials because if i keep doing that it's eventually gonna yeah you know it's gonna scrape against each other and like sand itself <laughs> similarly to the wood pla did you change any of the uh, nozzle yeah. temperature this so one this one's 210, 210 for this guy cool and uh not a not cool. a stringy as i thought battle. it would be yeah. Excavators <laughs> battle. that's terrible this is a different... No, actually, no, this is from the same one. You can see that's where it stopped there and it continues. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Take a look. How funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, this is uh, this week's uh, really cool community make. Very cool. Shout out to Shred EDU e on Printables. Let me pull up the printable site so folks can see it. It's a free download from Printables, formerly known as Prucibles. Prucibles. Yeah, just, uh, check out the, the mo uh, 3D object. Does that you rotate around it? Right, so yeah. this is how it is uh, placed on the bed of your printer. Very, very nice here. Wow, very cool. And uh, there are a few makes as well. So shout out to everybody making and posting their makes. It's good stuff. Sweet. We'll, post, we'll have to post a make later. All right, and that's this week's time lapse. Ooh. Check it out. We'll have links in the doobly doo. Do we still say doobly doo? <laughs> Rob says that the bucket on the tractor is the wrong way. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's funny. It's scooping, it? not. No, it's scooping. Right? Hey, I didn't design it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's like when we designed the. Um, oh, it's like this. The gun blade. Okay, it's like that. Oh, I know. I made, like the, you made the, the hammer on the like, wrong I'm side. I've never fired a weapon, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, so it should go like that. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me post the uh, rainbow digging. filament in here. It's digging. It's excavating. Now I have that song stuck Excavator. in my head. Excavator. Yep. <laughs> if you have kids, you know See what later. song I'm talking about. <laughs> cool. All right, here's the rainbow PLA. And then the wooden PLA. Cool. Paige's got all the links. Woo. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some links together uh, for the rest of the community makes. So let me throw up that thing here. These are this week's community makes. We have a little bit to go through, but we have time this week. Excellent. First up, we have a make of the USB three button hey. foot switch. Very cool. You know what's really cool about this one? Ooh. Um, so this was posted up by DDR Boxman on Thingiverse. Nice. Shout out to DDR Boxman because they wrote custom firmware what? for the RP2040, nice. so you can use this as a real Steam Deck pedal. Now check out this software from um, Stream Deck. You can drag and drop um, things. So the firmware um, that they wrote uh, just turns your RP2040 into a recognizable USB device. So he's got the USB uh, 
descriptor or ID or whatever the, the firmware needs and it's just as a native thing. That's very, very cool. <laughs> so check that out and you can uh, drag and drop whatever app um, in the sidebar here. It looks really fun, I gotta try this out. They've also added a NeoPixel um, ring See that. Uh, for kind of indicating stuff because I guess the uh, the three button thing from I guess is it Elgato or Stream Deck whoever makes this thing has an RGB LED so you can add all sorts of LED strip or a nice. ring or whatever and make it more integrated so it can light up whatever part of the foot pedal. Here's a quick look at the inside. It's just three zippy switches, your Pico, your five dollar Pico, and um, whatever ring, <laughs> whatever new Pixel ring. So what very very cool. I don't recall. What? I don't remember what I used, what board. <laughs> uh, Was it all you used the Pico? Yeah, okay. you probably used the Pico, I don't know. But uh, yeah, check out their GitHub. And on their GitHub, they have all the code uh, for doing the um, uh, for doing the firmware. You know what, it's also a UF2 file, so you literally just drag and drop the UF2 and it's I did good not to go, use man. a Pico, I used a uh, Pidge PewDiePie. Is, Pidge is looking at his thing. Well, they built, they- I know, that's- They made their own bracket a, for- This um, is exactly why I did that. Yeah. So here's Pedro's build, no LEDs, and it just looks just like a Nintendo Python. Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so very, very cool. Oh, this was what for was accessibility. For? <laughs> yeah, those are for um, kind of switches. AT switches, AT switches, yeah. switches, if you'd like. A lot of the AT switches out there use um, mono jacks, mono audio jacks, mm -hmm. TRS jacks. And here's all, uh, all the buttons. Yeah, they don't just break out there. So very cool, very good, uh, very, very impressive uh, make from DDR Box Man. All right, let me grab that for the That was one. the goal. I think that's what is always the goal with these. Yeah. Remix. A, pi a Pico deck, man, that's amazing. Cool. Uh, we have uh, a post, uh, a make of our Keyblade. We have a 3D printed um, screw together Keyblade from the video game series uh, Kingdom Hearts. Isn't there a new one coming out? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's like Kingdom Hearts 4. Hmm. Um, so Keyblades. Yet another one, very cool. Uh, this was the the full scale of it, I, I suppose. Looks pretty big. Um, it all screws together and has some uh, bits. So this was posted up by. Where's the username? I, I'm I'm used to Thingiverse. This is Colts 3D. So, ooh, there it is, dude. Sweet, dude underscore sweet. Shout out for posting your make. They pretty printed sweet, it on dude. Uh, Ender 3 Pro, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, it's a very, very lengthy blade. Very, very fun. I, I had a lot of fun building that. No electronics, just 3D printed bits. Mm -hmm. You can grab the model from any of the sites. So shout out to Dude Sweet for posting that up. Next right, up next is up. an Infinity Cube. Yeah, somebody made an Infinity Cube. Uh, posted up by RP209 is their make of the Infinity Cube. Uh, mm. I don't see any comments on it, so you could just see that it's... I think it's the... We did two versions of it, right? I made one version, you made a second version. Mm -hmm. I think this is my version because I have these little corners here and this base. Hmm. Um, cool. Looks great. Yeah, you can uh, cut your own mirrored film, two-way mirrored acrylic, and uh, have the LEDs embedded inside and make this very cool Infinity Cube that looks like that when it's turned on. And you can use whatever neo, neo strips you want. You can use regular LED strips, high density, low density. Whatever fits your budget, whatever you have on hand. So, pretty cool. All right. We got Next another one. <laughs> up is the Matrix Hourglass. LED Matrix Hourglass. All done in CircuitPython as well. This was posted up by uh, Rudin Meir. Posted this up on Thingiverse, and it's their build of the, uh, the LED Hourglass. Gosh, it looks gorgeous in that red. That is a beautiful photo, the way it's illuminating mm -hmm. and getting all these reflections too on the floor there. It looks fantastic. Um, this uses the 8x8 LED backpack matrices from Adafruit and um, I think the uh, the Adafruit Feather Sense, which has a Bluetooth uh, microcontrol uh, chip and a accelerometer. And that's how it's uh, able. you're able to turn it uh, up and down and it actually works as an LED hourglass. Um, they're saying they're quite happy with it. Delightful hourglass design from the great people of Adafruit. Easy to print and due to its thoughtful design, a nice addition to any home or office. I've tried yes. the smaller version, but I still have on the larger, I forgot to make two different versions. 
uh, so it could fit the Max uh, 7219 displays that they already had. And they also use the Wemos D1 Mini ESP 8266. Though that's nice. Those are like the, I think they're like a couple of bucks. So it's a nice low cost uh, dev board that everybody can get. Um, yeah, and then did it in Arduino. So check that out. And they have links to uh, to the the display in the uh, the Wemos D1 Mini. Cool. All right. So shout out to uh, to Redden E. Sorry for butchering your name. I apologize. But kudos to you, sir. Okay, next up we have another make. This is like a couple weeks worth of makes, so that's why we're uh, we're, we're just now getting to them. Um, Jack N Z posted up on Thingiverse a make of the Raspberry Pi Zero mount with a Sony NP battery holder. So it has a battery built battery holder built into the Raspberry Pi case, which is pretty cool. This is a mashup between the Sony NP series battery blank and a Raspberry Pi Pico case. This lets me mount my mm -hmm. Pi Zero to the back of an Aperture V screen with an NP connection on the back, so that I'm not using it. Uh, it could, it could, it could use blending of the two parts together to better uh, emulate the gap around the beveled edge, and I'll probably get around to that in a bit. Meanwhile, here's the concept. Very cool, Jack and Z. All right. Just a couple more. We have a dark saber build. Um, Looks like this oh, is one like, slight part that was updated right, to allow for cool. two speakers to go in. Okay, very cool. And this is posted by P O T T Y. <laughs> P O T T Y posted that one up. Booty. Potty. Potty. <laughs> and then. Uh, Heat set remix. Lupo Loopy posted this one up. It's their remix of the. Um, I think heat it's the set. yeah the, the roller plate um, for our heat press insert rig. You ever doing heat set inserts and you want a rig to make it easier? This is a project that helps you do that. And uh, they say um, they just made it fit their aluminum profile, so they remixed it so that it works with their stuff. So I like seeing that. And here's the original build, just to give you a context of what the whole build looks like. It's a piece of 2020 extrusion and some rack, some 3D printed parts to uh, mount a soldering iron. Um, so that you can do heat set inserts very perpendicular. Very cool. So if uh, you're doing a lot of those, check it out. I think we covered the the next one here, the iPhone case remix. Okay. Looks familiar. Well then Looks the last like one is a shout out to Remy. Remy posted this up a couple weeks ago, but they, they did a, uh, a little bit of a video that's they titled The Story Behind the MIDI Fighter. So it, it's a really good look, a quick kind of look at the history of kind of the MIDI fighter. The MIDI fighter is a MIDI controller um, that I'm really fond of. And uh, we've had several MIDI fighter kind of DIY projects and Remy um, took it on himself to add some features to our Raspberry Pi Pico project, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico MIDI fighter project with this one here. Um, so he made it so that um, the OLED screen displays the MIDI notes as opposed to just the value and uh, some bits where you can turn it off and turn it on it will save the mapping oh. which is really cool wow so shout out to remy for putting this together and did an excellent job on that and has this video on uh, kind of talking about the history of the uh of the midi fighter that was eventually released as a commercial product by dj tech tools so check that out i'll, I'll be sure to put a blog post on uh remy's uh video yeah and that's this week's community makes thank you everybody so much for sending your makes it's it makes our day when we see uh especially a makes. modified design for whatever specific board or a I have, specific use case and with that i have crashed safari it just won't i think go i think facebook like went down <laughs> tell me to go live again <laughs> Maybe but I everything else is down. no youtube's going are you folks still with us? Hello? I can't see. Like, no, we're good. My whole thing's crap. Nope, we're good on everything well, else. Well, I'm just saying, like, Discord won't load, so I can't show folks oh. their comments. I apologize. <laughs> nope, we're all good. All right, let's go ahead and Ooh. close out the show. I can't. It won't go. <laughs> <laughs> just go to the closing out. Can you close right. out? You're going to have to end the stream for me because my, mm -hmm. my browser has crashed. Yep, I can end it. All right. Thank you. I want to see the comments. <laughs> There's no comments. Okay. I would. I would well, tell you. Well, thanks everybody for. People uh, are typing though. 
so for, we, for joining now. us. We're um, still there. It's tough to do the show. <laughs> what do things go wrong? <laughs> we always have audio problems. Or we have noise outside. Our Bluetooth destroys the, the audio. Way to go, handoff. Yeah. Later tonight, we have some special goodies. We have a 10% discount code tonight on Ask an Engineer. It starts at 8 p.m. every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You can get a full hour of Martin Phil. They'll be live streaming tonight in their show called Ask an Engineer. Shortly before then, uh, at 7.30 p.m., we have a show and tell. So we invite you to come on the show and tell and show us what you might be working on. We also like to see retro gear, maker spaces, hacker spaces, yeah. ideas, that sort of stuff. So if you'd like to join us, you can you can drop in at around 7.20 p.m. We'll paste a link to the StreamYard, and then folks can join that way through the Discord. So you got to be on the Discord. So uh, this week, um, yeah, Lamar and Phil are, are hosting this week. Thank you to them. Tomorrow we have John Park's workshop at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in with John to build some stuff. On Fridays, we have a live stream with Tim, Foamy Guy, every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Eastern. You get a full deep dive session with Tim. And then on Sundays, we have From the Desk of Lady Ada. She's streaming on the weekends around Sundays at Hacker Hours. Um, tune in for sneak peeks, mm -hmm. secret sauce, and more. On Mondays, we have the CircuitPython meeting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, um, unless it's a US holiday, which will then be on the following day. But you can always check up on the uh, on the archive to, to kind of hear it. And you can listen to it on any of your favorite podcast players. Um, but it happens live in the Discord chat room um, on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Almost done. <laughs> on Tuesdays, JP's got another show for his product pick of the week every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. This You can get up to 50% off select picks from JP. This week was a feather wing screw block terminal. Yeah. So check that out. And then Wednesdays, we have the... 3D Hangouts. The 3D Hangouts show that we made to do every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And then later, we'll have these two shows. So Wednesdays have a lot of shows. The whole week has shows. Every day there's a show. Yeah, except uh, Saturday. Except Saturday, yeah. <laughs> How funny. Yeah. All right, it's going to be it for us. Good luck with all your maker endeavors. And with that... Yeah. We'll see you later tonight. But until then, remember to make a great day. Make a great day. See you later tonight. Bye, folks. Music. Music.